Many people don't realize just how late in pregnancy an abortion is done. Even more unknown is a new procedure to stop and reverse late-term abortion. This is the story of Claire's survival and birth. It's the triumphant story of two women who refused to give up on this baby. Stay with us. Jamie Stout of Las Vegas, Nevada had been struggling with a methamphetamine addiction since she was 18 years old. Her drug use tore her family apart and Jamie's parents took custody of her daughter, Vanessa. Nearly two years ago, Jamie was involved in an affair with her drug dealer and found herself pregnant and unsure of what to do. Jamie finally turned to her family with the determination to clean up her life. Tell me about Halloween the night that you decided to try to turn your life around. I had called home and asked if, you know, I could please come home and trick or treat with Vanessa. And she was in really bad shape. She, she was well, well taken care of by my parents, but she really, really needed me and missed me. And I guess my dad just finally had a little softening of the heart and said that my parents said that would be fine. Halloween night, uh, actually I made it home and I went trick-or-treating with them, with Vanessa and my mom and the neighborhood kids, and dad stayed home and passed out candy. And I came home and sat on the couch with my dad, and I just probably poured out my heart and said, Dad, I can't do this anymore. Can I please come home? And for them to see how happy Vanessa was to see me, and it just, something changed right there. The Holy Spirit just like made a miracle happen because my dad finally was agreeable to, you come home, you don't do this again, you get straight, you know. And they gave me another chance. I uh, literally slept for a week to get off the drugs. And when I woke up, it was like, I didn't, for some reason I just did not run, want to run and get high anymore. I wanted to stay there and be with Vanessa. But there was a pink uh, elephant in the room, a problem that everybody knew about and it was time to talk about it as a family. And that was your pregnancy? That was my pregnancy. So how did you come to the conclusion that you were gonna choose abortion? My parents didn't have it in them to take on and raise another child. I wasn't sure that I could stay home and take care of her and raise her. I didn't have a job. I didn't, I wasn't stable at all. You were very early in your recovery, weren't you? Very early yeah. in my recovery and very far along in my pregnancy. I was about 20 weeks pregnant and it was getting like we had to hurry up and make a decision. Jamie had a history of abortions, so she thought it would be the easiest solution for her current situation. Early on in her pregnancy, Jamie visited First Choice Pregnancy Services for an ultrasound and consultation. One of the staff members, Marina Cortopassi, was also Jamie's neighbor. Marina and Jamie's daughters were good friends, and Vanessa hinted to Marina Jamie was pregnant again. One day while at work, Marina's boss, Pam, asked her to gather some ultrasound photos for a banquet they would be hosting. While going through the photos, she discovered Jamie's ultrasound and learned she was abortion-minded. I was working that day and I was going through the logbook and I came across Jamie Stout. I'm like, oh my gosh, Pam, this is my neighbor. So um, at that point, I knew that she was considering abortion. My son actually had a birthday on November 8th and this is when Vanessa came to the party and she made a comment to my daughter. She also told my daughter Emily that she was going to have to miss school on Tuesday because her papa had to take her mom to have surgery on the baby. I knew about how far along she was according to her ultrasound that she had had at the clinic and how, um, how much time had passed and so I knew that it was a two to three day procedure so I'm figuring okay it's starting on Tuesday Monday is my only chance to get to her. I knew that approaching Jamie, I was also going to have to approach her parents. Um, they do, it's all a family there and they do everything collectively. So um, I went to the center, everybody prayed, we all talked about it and, and I just got up the courage to know that this is what I was going to have to do. I'm going to have to go to their house and just talk to them. If nothing else, just give them a second thought. And so I came back home from the center and Jamie's car was gone. And now Jamie's car hadn't left in front of her house for a week. And so I called down to the center and I had our, um, one of the girls, Jahira, look at the end of the street where the abortion clinic is, where 
perfectly located by God's mm -hmm. divine intervention about where our building is. And I said, you know, I described the car to her and I said, can you please go look and see if her car is there? And she went there and she said, Marina, it's here. Coming up, Marina does everything she can to stop Jamie from going through with the abortion. Look around you. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. This Emmy Award-winning show tackles challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, and adoption, and shows every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Marina Cortopassi knew her neighbor, Jamie Stout, was at an abortion facility waiting to have the procedure, but she felt she still had to try anything she could to change Jamie's mind. Marina contacted Pam Kaler, the executive director of First Choice Pregnancy Services, to see what could be done to help Jamie. I called Pam and I said, um, Pam, it's too late, she's already there. Pam was thinking for a little while and we were talking and she goes, you know, Marina, it's not too late you need to go to the abortion clinic. And I was like, what? <laughs> you know, I, I, I've used the analogy before that I don't like to confront a fly. I'm the most non-confrontational person ever, and here she's telling me to walk into an abortion clinic. And, but how could I not? I had been at a, at a um, conference with NIFLA, and one of the doctors there had talked about reversing abortions. And to my knowledge, it's never been done before in Vegas, and to my knowledge, it hasn't been done since. So it really was my first thought. 19, 20 weeks, you know what? If she decides she doesn't want to do that, because Marina was good friends with Jamie, and Marina knew Jamie's history, and um, she knew that in her heart of hearts that really wasn't what she wanted. She knew she felt trapped. So I got in my truck. I drove down there and was just hoping that I would find them still in the waiting room. And I really didn't know what to expect. You know, I, I went down and I drived it, uh, I parked at our um, clinic at First Choice and I was walking down there and I'm thinking in my head all these scenarios, you know, they're gonna have the cops here, I'm gonna get arrested, I'm gonna be harassment, and, but none of it mattered. You know, it was just at least giving it a, a try. Marina found Jamie's father, Jim, sitting in the parking lot of the abortion facility. She was alarmed to find out Jamie was currently undergoing the first part of the late-term abortion procedure. Jamie started a two-day abortion procedure, and a lot of people don't realize that there are two- and three-day abortion procedures. Um, from 19 weeks on, it's at least two days. At about 22 weeks and on, it becomes a three-day in most clinics. Um, with Jamie, they had planned it to be two days. They had put in a packet of laminaria, which are dried seaweed, and they kind of look like a long matchstick. They wrap it in gauze and they insert them one by one and they insert as many as they can get in there and then as the laminaria absorbs moisture they begin to expand and that begins to make the cervix expand. So it immediately begins, to, it, for Jamie, it immediately began to have her, her body began to have contractions. They inserted these laminaria in me and told me that it wouldn't hurt, it would just take a second and I remember the doctor shoving something up inside of me and it hurt really, really bad. And the nurses kept telling me, you're almost done, it's almost over. And it seemed like forever. And they were just hurting me, hurting me, hurting me. Remember, I've been through this before, so I kind of knew a little bit what to expect. And this wasn't the same. My, I was like on fire and I was sweating and my consciousness was like in and out of it. I couldn't walk. It's like I hardly knew where I was. I didn't know, I just felt terribly sick. Something was not right. And she was um, calling for my dad to come pick me up at the back door, you know? And at that time is when Marina had made it to the clinic and was out there talking to my dad. She came up to the uh, passenger side window and the sun was behind her and her hair was just kind of hanging down 
and I'll, I'll just never forget it. She was crying, just bawling her head off. Jim, we can we can stop this abortion, you know. We and and I'm looking at her, and it was like an angel talking to me, and I. I just put my hands on the steering wheel and said, There's, it's not my choice. I can't, I can't tell my daughter what to do now. I said, it's up to Jamie. A nurse was walking Jamie out of the clinic and Jamie was in severe pain. I could tell she's doubled over a little bit. And I said, Jamie, can I just talk to you for a minute? And she's like, Maria, really? There's not really that much to talk about. There's nothing to talk about. And I'm like, no, Jamie, there is. I'm like, I know how you feel, and I know that you've regretted your abortions in the past. And I said, it's not too late. If you want this baby, you need to, to say it now. And um, she said, you know, it's too late. And then she just kept referring to how she was tired and, and hungry, and she just wanted to go home and get in her bed, and she didn't feel good. And so I said, please just allow me to at least come over to the house right now and talk to you. And they both said, okay, and, and Jim, I, I looked at Jim, I said, you promise you're gonna answer your door? And he said, yeah, Marina, I promise I'll let you in. And I said, okay. When I woke up, she was sitting on my bed next to me, and she was just telling me, Jamie, um, we can change this, I, I can help you. And just look, Vanessa's gonna be so proud of you and see what a strong girl you are to make this happen. And I was just like, Marina, it's not that easy, I can't, do this again, you know? I've already hurt Vanessa this bad. I don't imagine what I could do to this daughter. You know, can't do it. And she just was like, Jamie, she must have been an angel. Just, you can do it. It's your daughter. I said, Dad, what do I do? You know, and he said, honey, whatever you do, I will support you. And I said, well, then let's go. Let's change this. Let's do it. When we return, we'll hear about the persistence of an ER doctor to reverse Jamie's abortion. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. When Jamie Stout arrived at the hospital, Pam Kaler was waiting with the doctor she had found who was willing to perform the abortion reversal. But first, they had to check for the baby's heartbeat. At the beginning of a late-term abortion procedure like the one Jamie had, the baby's heart is usually injected with poison and stopped to prevent a live birth. Miraculously, they heard the heartbeat of Jamie's baby. So he went ahead and got the heartbeat and measured it, and we said, okay, now you can take the laminary out. <laughs> so he shoot us out of the room, and. We were out in the break room, or the waiting room, for about 30 minutes, and he came out and said, sorry, I can't do it, it's too late. And I'm like, uh, excuse me? <laughs> what do you mean it's too late? <laughs> he says, I can't, I can't do it, it's too late. I said, um, is there an OB here? Can you get an OB? We'd like a second opinion. <laughs> and he said, I'll be back. So he went and uh, called their OB and found out what he needed to do. and made a second attempt and at that point he was able to get the laminary out. They had told us there was a risk, probably a 75% risk of her miscarrying, um, just because the abortion had been started. And then after he was able to successfully remove all the laminaria, he came out and reported there's at least an 85% chance that she's going to lose this baby anyway. Emergency room nurse told me, honey, you've lost too much blood, just be prepared, you're not going to keep the baby, it's not going to make it. And I was like, that's okay, because you know what? I changed my mind. I, no matter what, you know, God's brought me to this, brought me here, 
And if it was all just for me to change my mind on abortion and my view on abortion, it's all been worth it. With the help of First Choice Pregnancy Services and Marina, Jamie found a doctor willing to take her case. She diligently followed the doctor's orders and waited for her baby's arrival. Four weeks before her due date on February 24, baby Claire was born. Jamie called me on my birthday and said that her water broke. I was there from, I don't even know what time I we went to the hospital, four o'clock in the afternoon, up all night thinking at any moment, any moment, and um, I think it was like 6.30 the next morning, the doctor came in and said, we gotta do a C-section, mm. so. So then when you do want her to come out, she did Right, yeah, yep, she stays in there. So she, we did the C-section. Uh, Were you there well, for I that? Didn't the, I didn't do it personally, but yeah. yes. Um, I was there the whole time in the, in the room and cut the cord. I really? Yeah. What was that like for you to be part of that process? It was amazing. I mean, there's there's just no words. The whole the whole thing is miraculous in itself, but it was intense. You know, day to day was intense, and and to be able to finally hear her cry was a wonderful sound. She was adorable. She was just wailing and crying and a little purple, but <laughs> she was. She was adorable. She's my baby. Um, she's a real gift. Claire is now a central part of the Stout family, and Vanessa is a wonderful big sister. The joy these girls bring to their family is a welcome change from the tough years that preceded Claire's birth. Tell me what it's like to be a big sister to Claire. It's really cool being a big sister, like knowing that one day she's just going to look up to you. And then sometimes it really hurts when she holds your hair and stuff. <laughs> but the love that she looks like when she looks in my eyes is just way better than when she pulls my hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. Yeah. Through all the difficult times, did you ever think that there would be such a happy time as you're enjoying now? I really didn't think there was going to. Like, I thought I was just going to be like that for forever. Mm. And I didn't know, I didn't think she'd come back. It was really sad times. Yeah. But now they're happy times, right? Yep. Yeah. They're when a lot did you think, now. When did you think it was all going to turn around? On Halloween, not last year, but the year before, she came home and she said that she was going to come home that time and she usually she said that a lot sometimes and then she'd stay for a couple of days and then when I'm at school she'd leave but that time she really stayed and she's been there ever since. Can you imagine your life without Claire? No I can't. What do you think it'd be like? It would be like lonely and quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Really quiet. Yeah. Huh? yeah. In a moment, we'll hear about the impact Claire's birth has made on Jamie and her family. Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption, and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Since Jamie decided to give Claire life, her situation has completely turned around. And she's grateful for Marina's persistence in trying to save her baby's life. Deep in her heart, Jamie knew she had always wanted life for Claire, but didn't believe she could handle the responsibilities. Marina's insistence she could do it is what finally changed Jamie's mind and her life. She was so right. Because ever since we changed our minds and we had the success of the reversal, I never, never one day have I wanted to drink. I never one day have I wanted, rather be high than just be feeling normal. My daughter and my relationship is totally restored. She got her prayers answered from heaven that mommy came home. My parents forgave me. It's just been a total blessing ever since. 
This family went from thinking um, of the worst circumstances, like we can't afford this, um, we won't be able to do this, you know, we already have Vanessa that we're trying to take care of, and um, to they have a baby, they have um, a, they've bought a home now themselves, have moved into the home, and they just said blessing after blessing after blessing has poured down on them since Claire's birth. What do you say to people who don't believe that an abortion like this can actually be reversed? Believe it. <laughs> this is living proof. In the circumstances that it might get this far, don't stop having faith. This is kind of like groundbreaking territory for mm -hmm. your work, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, to imagine, you know, women that are in normal, healthy pregnancies end up having to have cerclages where they stitch the cervix closed to be able to carry to term. And in Jamie's instance, you know, she had trauma done to her cervix, literally, and was still able to recover and have a beautiful, healthy baby. I hope that this story touches many, many hearts. Um, if nothing else, just to be able to, to hear of the hope and the change that it has caused. Um, this baby has brought that family so many blessings in, in more ways than we can ever imagine.